Hello, so in this episode we're going to run through the different types of fryer that we can we can do and uh, so we'll run the intro and get started. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to work around this fine fur, which is around this area around the eye. As you can see, it's quite fine. So what I'm going to do is use the Cretacolor 9H to do this. Um, it is sharp. And what I'm going to do is just use it just to, to go through and just put some very, very fine texture into here. Now, we've already put tone on the paper. So... Basically, the 9H will actually pull that and will give us the effect that we want. So, as you can see, I'm just using the 9H and I'm just literally just very, very short strokes and just pulling toned down and that just puts a very very subtle texture into the paper Now, as you can see, I'm now working on the top part and just pulling the tone away from the dark. I don't want to work into it. I want to basically just pull the tone away from the darker area. Also as well, I'm having to work up. And you can see I put some angle in the pencil because again, I don't want to be pushing the tip into the paper as that will drive it in and cut the paper. So I'm literally just working upwards, just a different angle. And then down here, you can see I use a different angle again. And again, they're doing the same thing. I'm working so as I don't cut the paper. Now, with a picture this size, it's actually much easier to just turn the paper around. But for the sake of making the video, I'm just going to keep it in the same place because it'll be easier to to see. So as you can see, I'm now working on the, the muzzle. And again, there's a very subtle bit of tone in the paper, which we put down with the blending stump. But as you can see, that's enough just to give us that little bit of tone. And I can just slowly, slowly build up the texture. As you notice, as I get into the lighter areas the tone gets much much lighter the 9h pencil um, when you do have it sharp it stays sharp for a very very long time and now as i move down to the bit just by the nose and it starts to go into more of a skin area.
I'm just being a little bit more random with the stroke. And as you can see, as I work over it, the tone that's on the paper, it does have an unusual effect. It, it can sometimes start to look darker. And that's just, I think, because the pencil has uh, engraved the tone into the paper. So I'm just continuing to work up above the eye. As you can see, the, the texture is very dense. You are putting a lot of texture into the paper. Otherwise, the effect just doesn't work. Now, as I said last week, you don't want to work too long with the engraving as this will basically um, start to make your hand ache after a while. So it's a good idea to take lots of little breaks. Uh, usually what I do is I put a bit of texture in and then put a bit of tone over the top. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm just doing it this way. As, you, as you'll see it build up a, a little bit quicker. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just switch to a 2B pencil. And then, as you can see, it's very blunt. And I'm just going to randomly just brush a little bit of tone in. And that will just add just a little bit more contrast into the the area that I'm working on. You see, I'm not going over the whole thing. It's just random and it's just over just little tiny areas. Same just on the muzzle. muzzle just going to add just a little bit more tone in a couple of places down here on top of the nose and then just a bit more tone in around under the nose just again just to build a little bit more contrast and remember because the pencil's blunt it won't go down in those little grooves that we've made with the 9H I've got to remember as well we've got some whiskers to put in as well so I'm just steering clear of that area. Now, this is a Creta Color 9H, and they can be quite difficult to get hold of. So I have put a link in the description below. Uh, this one's very old and it's been dropped on the floor a number of times and the lead's never broken. So uh, it is a good one. So again, I'm now switching to a, a 2B pencil and just building a little bit more tone just by dabbing it into some places. And also as well, I now start to just build a little bit more tone into the nostril. And I'm just going to very likely just dab a little bit of tone around on the nose. And that will use the grain of the paper to basically show a little bit of skin texture. So you can see that very subtle texture just comes through. Build a little bit more tone in under the nose. And I tend, as I, I get a, an area done, I tend to kind of move around from one place to the other. 
and just slowly build more tone in when I think it needs something. Like this area here looks a little bit too straight. So I'm just going to just break that up just a little bit by just brushing a little bit more tone in to that bit just there. And I'm now just going to take the 9H and just a little bit of texture on the edge. Again, the tone which is already on the paper is enough for this. So just literally just pulling that out just a little bit. And then just a little bit more tone over the top just to make that edge stand out just a little bit more. And again, just building a bit more tone in with the 2B pencil. So I'm now just going to take the 9B and remember, like I said last week, uh, I'd normally do all this at the end, but just for the, the sake of this, I'm just going to add a little bit of tone in with the 9B, just so you can see uh, the contrast difference that it does actually give. It's very subtle, but it is enough to, to really make a difference to how the picture looks. And again, I'm just dabbing that in over the top of the 2B. And then I'll just take the 2B just to finish it off. This will just very subtly just soften the edges. Just going to put a little bit more 9B into this area. And again, just use the two just to spread it just a little bit. So I'm now going to take the putty rubber and I'm just going to just highlight the odd little area just to, again, just add a little bit more shape. So you can see I've rolled the point again. And literally you can just use this just to, to draw out some of the tone that you don't want. By rolling the point, it basically means that it doesn't transfer much pressure through and you can literally just, as you work over it, just brush little bits of tone away at a time. So I'm now just continuing with the 9H. But what I'm going to do in a second is I'm just going to switch to the dart as the fur gets coarser. Now one thing you don't want to do, you can see where I'm going with the, the 9H pencil. The 9H is noticeably finer than the dart. And you don't want to have a solid line joining them up.
So now what I'm doing, I'm just working into the bit that I just did with the 9H and then the two textures will blend together. So I just do a little bit with the dart. Again, crossing the strokes over, but now going from shorter strokes to longer ones. And again, back with the 2B and just lightly dabbing in a little bit of tone. And as you can see, it just shows that coarser bit of texture through. Now I can apply a little bit more tone to some bits just to make them stand out just a little bit more. And I just want to soften this edge slightly under here. So I'm just going to use the dart just to pull out some of the tone and just soften the edge like that. And that just blends it in nicely. Again, I can see a bit where I just want to add a little bit more tone under the eye. So I'm just going to just use the 2B for this. The thing is, as you work on the picture, as you add more tone in some areas, it affects how the bit next to it looks. And you can then need to adjust how much tone there is in that as you go. Now, anywhere where like this marking here, where I think it's uh, a little bit too harsh, then what I can do is I can just take the blending stump and just brush some tone into the grooves. Now, as you can see, this has softened that right off. Uh, also here, I just want to just do the same thing, just soften that just a little bit, and that will push the tone again into the grooves. And then by just applying a bit more 2B over the top, it's just that little bit more subtle. And same again just through here. I'm just going to just soften the look just very slightly, just with the blending stump. So again, this fur is a bit coarser that's above the eye. I remember, like I said, with a small picture like this, it's much easier to just turn the picture around, uh, unlike what I'm doing here. Uh, for larger pictures, it's a little bit more tricky, which is why you learn to hold the pencils and the tools in a slightly different way just to create the effect you want without cutting the paper with the when engraving. And again, as it goes into this part, just want a little bit more tone. 
and equally as well and just kind of just soften that off just a little bit it's a little bit too harsh for what i want and then just in a couple of places i'll just brush a little bit more tone in with the 2b So I now just continue the same thing working through, putting some texture in. And then just brushing a bit of 2B pencil over it. and then just slowly build it up. Now, as you can see, this is a very time consuming process, but uh, it does give a, a nice result to it. And it is, uh, I think, worth the, the, the time to do it. Now, this part of the picture is probably the most time consuming to do. And as we move down to the fur on the, the body and doing all of that, it will get a little bit quicker. So as you can see, we've covered a, a number of different fur textures within this and using the 9H pencil and also the dart. Now, next week, what we've got to work on is finishing off the rest of the body also the whiskers which go across like in the the ears and just these little ones under here then put the edge fur on we're also going to add a, a gray background to it as well and we'll cover all of that next week now like i said this bit is the most time consuming because i wanted to go through and cover all those different types of textures that we needed to create so anyway, I hope you've found this useful. And if you have, please remember to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. As usual, all the links below are for the materials that I use to create these pictures. And um, hopefully see you next week.